All right. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Kingdom of the Kale Isles. Yes, this is my custom D&D campaign where I get to control everything and I get to make up stuff because there's there's no one that can call me out on it because I can just go, no, it's always been that way. It's in my head. Um... And the people you see below me are the amazing, lovely people that uh, have decided to let me decide when their characters live and die. So, I mean, <laughs> always awesome when that happens. Yep. Um, uh, to give you guys a real quick recap of what's happening right now, um, the characters have all uh, infiltrated a um, gladi uh, gladiator arena to try and recruit a few of the gladiators to help train their resistance. They're unfortunately trapped there with their plan um, not uh, working the way that they intended it and uh, are now trying to kind of suss out, you know, who who are friends, who are enemies in this, this relatively large, like, gladiator city that's located underneath the arena. They have fought in the arena twice and... Um, each time uh, the battles have been getting more difficult. Um, they've made a few friends. They've made quite a few enemies. Uh, and most recently they found out that um, there is a way out. Um, however, the last person to escape uh, appeared, not only came back to the gladiator city against her will, but had something done to her mind that made her have extreme pain anytime she attempted to remember how to get out. So at the very end of our, uh, our last episode, um, Fade, our resident cleric and all around cool divine dude, um, mm -hmm. had a vision from his deity um, about his own personal quest uh, that he's been uh, going on. So, uh, let's put some mood music on, guys. There we go. All right, so. Uh, so we're going to say you guys went to sleep because it's easiest for me to start at the beginning of a day. Mm -hmm. uh, since it's been a month since we last played. Um, so you guys wake up. Uh, Fade, you notice that um, due to your vision while you were sleeping, you don't feel quite as rested um, as you normally do. And to be perfectly honest, this isn't the greatest place to sleep anyways, so you're not feeling all that great. The rest of you guys, as you wake up, you know, you're, as you wake up, you have sore muscles and you have like, you know, knots and things in your back from sleeping on uncomfortable, you know, straw and, and the hard ground being worried, um, most of the time about, uh, somebody coming in and either attempting to steal the weapons that, you know, you use to keep yourselves alive or just coming through to kill you outright. So, nights in general are not the most um, uh, enjoyable experience. Um, so, as you guys wake up, uh, what would you like to do? Take inventory of our stuff. Uh, perception check for me. Oh, Christ. Oh, yeah. Mm. Perception. Yeah. Ooh, 23. Mm. Uh, Anyone beat a 23? No, I got no. 18. I got an 18. Okay. Uh, Fade, you notice that you're naked? No. Um, everything's there. Um, um, uh, Fade, make me a medicine check. Oh, boy. Medicine. Medicine plus... Eight? What? Proficiency? 25, buddy. Um, nice. Cleric. So as you're kind of, you know, checking everything, you know, readjusting your armor and everything to make sure it's tight where it's supposed to be tight, um, 
you start noticing that every time you use uh, which arm do you have the holy symbol implanted in? Left. Left. You start noticing every time you use your left arm, um, it uh, it hurts. And so you kind of remove the bracer on that arm and look, and the skin around where you, because if I remember correctly, you use like a cure wounds or something to kind of heal the scar and everything, right? Yep. yep. You notice that the skin around it is starting to turn this like dark purple. Mm. Um, and uh, as you um, take it off, you kind of get this um, wave of this very rancid smell. Do I smell it? Um, it's not quite strong enough for anyone other than him to smell right now. So oh, okay. it's, re- it's really just Fade that knows about this. But you were really close when you were taking it off and looking at, you know, as you touch it a little bit, it's very, very tender. It hurts anytime you move it. And um, it doesn't feel like normal skin. Like uh, something is definitely real wrong. happy. I'm oh. really into this. Uh, um, all right. So if I have a sec, I'm going to experiment on it. Oh. So I'll pull out a, con- a little knife or something. Oh, I have a Hydra Fang. I'll cut it open with a Hydra Fang. Okay. And by um, cut it open, I mean poke it. I want to see if anything comes out. All right. Uh, um, so as you sit like there an and you something? start uh, cutting into it, uh, you notice that um, uh, the skin itself um, is relatively like there's a as weird as it sounds there's a skin on it um, there's like a film on top of it that as you kind of prod and poke with the hydra fang um, it it moves um like if uh like if you had like a plastic bubble on that part of your arm but um you don't push incredibly hard um but you get the idea especially with it was what, like a 24 on your nature check yeah you're relatively um, certain that if you use a little bit more pressure you can pierce whatever this film is <laughs> i think i have to do it okay so as you do that, uh, I need a constitution save from you. Uh, and unfortunately, just because of who you are, Kata, I need one from you too. Oh, yeah. Natural one. Okay. Fantastic. What'd you get, Fade? Six. All right, so as you do uh, that, um, the film bursts like a balloon and outpours this uh, kind of grayish black liquid that just starts kind of flowing down your arm uh, and onto the floor. And it's kind of the consistency of, uh, of like old pudding. And as soon as it bursts, everybody around you is hit by this wave of incredibly rancid scent. Um, Fade and, and Kata because Fade because you're closest and Kata because your senses in general are a little bit more heightened than everyone else. Um, you guys retch as soon as you smell it. It's the worst smell you've ever had. Okay. Um, what? Uh, who, who dropped it? Fade, it was, you I hold it up so that it wasn't leaking. Yeah. You have actually smelled this before. Um, this is the smell of, uh, flesh, uh, necrotizing, um, and rotting. Of course he has smelled that. Eva, I know I've upset you before, but I have something to make you happy. I need you to cut my arm open. It, you see how bad this is now? It's only going to get worse, and I'd rather try to save it because you know my uh, art the one on cleric would be a cool character type but I, no i don't want to know how the fuck it happens just <sighs> so basically there's uh there's this uh, little symbol here 
that's actually under my skin. Hey, Kata, I might need your help because I'm probably going to pass out from this. Just dig uh, in there and just get it. Hold on. I'll need it, though. Don't toss it. Can I even hear him at this point? Uh, yeah, you just, once once the initial wave of, like, nausea passed, you are uncomfortable um, uh, because the scent is very, very powerful. Um, but you are, are well within, you know, control of your faculties. You just okay. don't like it. Uh, what do you want me to do? Just heal me if I start to die. That's probably that's probably I think where we're at at this point. I okay. This is really fucked up. But oh, whatever. Fade, um, you are currently uh, uh, affected with the poisoned condition. Ooh. Okay. okay. Oh, God. Why did I? Oh, <sighs> you have a tiger. Can I borrow it? Sure. Thanks. You may not want it back. Uh, <laughs> keep that one. Right. Uh, Ever, right. uh, mm-hmm. If you're going to be doing the cutting, make me a medicine check. Okay. Oh, I still have a plus one. That's something. <laughs> okay. Using the crit roll dice. Go Ooh. for it. Nice. Seven. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fade, I need um, two constitution saving throws from you. There's a seven and a twelve. Okay. Because slow. So, Abok, as you start cutting in, um, to his arm, uh, it cuts much easier than you're used to flesh in general cutting. Obviously, it's been weakened by something. Um, and it's actually not incredibly deep that you have to cut. He, he uh, hid the holy symbol um, directly under his skin. Uh, however, as soon as you cut into it the first time, you watch fade jerk his arm out and scream out in immense pain. You see oh, don't be a peasant. I love it. Go into an immediate flop sweat. Um, and uh, you uh, you actually call Kata and Elaine over to try and hold him down ah! as you do this. You okay? Um, yes. It takes Just you the better part of about 15 minutes to make the cuts necessary to pull out the holy symbol, which is covered in this kind of black and gray ooze that smells horrible. Um, Okay. Fade is screaming the Um, entire time. Um, When they're done, uh, four football care wounds. Okay. Okay, seriously. Avok, as as you finish, you kind of walk away a little bit to try and keep the little amount of food you guys have had here down um, as Kata goes over and starts trying to heal it. Um, Kata, uh, I would like you to choose even or odd. 28. Uh, 28 HP. Choose even or odd, Kata. Uh, Even. All right. So, Fade, as soon as you come back, let me know. Uh, for those of you wondering, Roll20 has just been being very, very mean to us all night. Hi. And so, uh, I can hear Fade fine and see him. Oh. Um, I'm going to reload oh, real quick. Cause, oh, wait, there. Yeah. Hi, Fade. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... As she attempts to heal you, um, something goes wrong with the magic. As you sit there concentrating uh, and and trying to get the wound to heal, the magic kind of backfires a little bit. Um, uh, Fade, uh, you uh, watch her as she's she's trying to heal it and... uh, you feel the healing magic get in there and then twist and you take 14 points of necrotic damage. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. 
Oh, it's all good things. And you have level two exhaustion. Ah! I know that familiar feeling. Anywho. Okay. But uh, your arm uh, hurts really, really bad. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's getting worse anymore. Like it, it feels like there's a possibility that it might start healing. Um, but you do get the idea that you think you need to clean this wound out. Like healing magic is great, but examining it and looking at your holy symbol and everything like that. What was that? I have no I idea. It's cool, whatever it is. I think it was uh, it was Avok for a second. Yeah, Avok, you got feedback on your mic right now. Whoa. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna turn your volume down for just a second so I can finish dealing with Fade, and then we'll we'll fix that. Um, so Fade, um, you get the idea that um, what's your holy symbol? It's a uh, metal, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so having the metal under your skin was not the healthiest thing in the world for you, but it wasn't horrendous. However, um, using it to cast necromatic spells, you think caused kind of a reaction um, sure. with your skin. Can it's, I maybe uh, cast like a false life on my arm to just kind of build up my defenses so it, it heals a little bit faster maybe? You think right now, uh, just based on what happened with Kata, there's still necromatic energy in it, specifically in this like pus thing that's yeah. leaking out of it. And you think as as low tech as it sounds, uh, you think that um, the best thing in the world right now is to clean the wound, like just get water, clean out as much of the just necrotic flesh and everything as you can. Um, but you don't think magic is going to help this heal at all. Okay. Well, now that I've taken up all this time, I'm going to go create some uh, food and water and go deal with this while other people do things. Okay. I'm embarrassed, so I'm going to like go in the corner. Okay. So you guys watch Fade kind of wander away. Um, the little hut that you guys are in still smells very strongly because the stuff is in piles on the ground. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So no, okay. what do the rest of you guys want to do? Um, hold on one second, guys. Let's have everyone just reload the page real quick. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, you are getting massive feedback on your mic. Um, <sighs> are you using the headset mic or are you using the one built into the Mac? Uh, it should be the headset mic. Uh, okay. Yeah, hang on. Let me see if I can fix that. Um, more likely than not, um, if you just play around with the, the plug, the... I think I know why. Hold that up. Okay. Better? Yes, much better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the uh, input volume is a bit high. Oh. It, uh, whenever you speak, it um, it comes back. Mm-hmm. We'll just we'll just have to monitor it throughout this. As long as it's not stopping other people from talking, I'm I'm fine with it. All right. All righty then. So tech problems are still going really really well. Yep. Um. Okay. So, uh, so for the rest of you guys, um, Fade is, has wandered off into a corner to try and treat his wound more traditionally by cleaning it out, by wrapping it, everything like that. Um, the rest of you guys, the uh. Uh, do I still have his holy symbol since I took it out of him? Or did he... Uh, he would he would have taken it from you, okay. uh, just to kind of examine it. Gotcha. Um, um, but the rest of you guys, uh, the hut that you guys are are living in, uh, smells very very strongly of this rancid, you know, decaying flesh. 
I get out of there so I can have some, like, fresh air. Okay. So you watch Kata just, you know, holding her mouth and nose just rush out. Um, as soon as you get out of the very enclosed space you're in, um, uh, the city that you guys are in doesn't smell amazing, but it smells better than the inside of that hut. So you can breathe a little bit easier. The nausea starts to pass. Elaine, Avok, what about you guys? Um, I'm going to go have a little chat with uh, Faye. So, yeah. <sighs> oh, good job. Good job cutting my arm off. Open. That was great. Thank you for that. You did a good job. I like your technique. Okay, I don't know what the fuck that was all about, but I can recognize her little necklace thingy or whatever it is. Uh, clearly, that my holy symbol. Yeah, you clearly put that in, so um, any particular reason as to why you would do something stupid like that? Yeah, remember we were selling ourselves into slavery. I figured they'd take all our weapons and armor, so. I would be able to heal you when you fell down, which always happens. So I went ahead and took one for the team. You're welcome. But hey, we might have taken care of it. Maybe my arm falls off. Maybe it doesn't. I'll bring it back. It'll be a friend. Just be lucky this was during the end of the battle. Otherwise, I'd kill you. Oh, thank you. All right, Elaine, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, what, uh, what are you doing? Um, I guess I'll just kind of go outside the hut. Okay. I'll make sure God takes all right, kind of just make sure uh, no one's nearby trying to watch or anything. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Well, that was a two, so like five. Okay. Yeah, you come out. Kata looks paler than you're used to seeing her, but otherwise, altogether, you know, there. Um, fade, it takes you probably about mm, five, ten minutes to, to wrap everything. Um, you get the idea that it's just, you don't think you're going to lose the arm, but you're relatively certain it's just going to take time for it to heal. I'm going to contemplate putting my tacky power gem in the wound soon, but I won't do it right now. That would be a brilliant idea. I really, I strongly recommend this. Um, I am still getting massive feedback from your mic, Evok. More likely than not, it's uh, a crossed wire or... Um, it just went back up. Why did it go back up? Oh, because I have control over your volume. Oh. Um, so I can, like, I can mute you, and then I can turn your volume back up. Okay. Um, um, what hmm. it sounds like is uh, either a magnetic field... Um, we used to get feedback like that if someone was to take a wired microphone and wrap the cord around the mic stand because it would create an electromagnet by having a wire with an electric current running through. Okay. Uh, so I would fiddle with where the mic is plugged in, you know, move it around a little bit, a little bit. see if that does Okay. Anything. This happened just when I plugged in the charger for the laptop, so maybe test the theory. Anything? Yeah, it's not happening anymore, so yeah, it's it's probably the current from the uh, charger. From the charger. Great. Well, this thing's on 19%, so that's going to suck. Well, um, keep it plugged in, and... Uh... You know, we'll 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 just deal with the uh, the sound this time, and then we'll do a, a better sound check next time. Right. Um, I may. Uh, you should be able to mute yourself. Um, so go ahead when you're not talking, just mute yourself. 
in Roll20, don't touch your mic settings, because I'm afraid they'll explode. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so... Um, yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> so you're all awake now. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. What would you guys like to do? Fade, you uh, mm -hmm. you still have two levels of exhaustion, um, uh, and uh, you're still suffering from the poison condition, um, but you think the uh, poisoned condition feeling will probably fade within an hour or so. <laughs> um, I'm going to... Look over to Elaine and uh, see if I can get some more information about the old serrated death boy. Okay. With the gadget arm. So, Elaine, what's the deal with uh, that guy? You clearly know him. He saved our asses. Mm. I need to know him more. I've got a thing with him. Mm. So I want you to handle your thing first. He was just the guy from my childhood who made a mistake to feed me. So he got locked up, and now he's here. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could offer him a job forever, like in eternity, i.e. being a blacksmith for our wonderful cause, because we should do that. <laughs> See this hammer? I bet you he'll, like, he'll love to swing it to make metal things. I don't know. He seems pretty intent on the fact that no one's getting out of here. Okay, okay, okay. How about you two go together and ask him? Only if we hold hands. Um. Come on, dude. Mm. I, 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 put, I put the stinky one over by him. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, here, you can hold the other end of this whip. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we'll go like that. <laughs> I'll follow it. Dude, are, are you guys okay with us going to talk to him or trying to find him? Or do you want to come yeah. try to come with? Yeah. I'm really it. slow. Do you want to come see Serrated Death or not? Okay. Hey, Mark! Come hey, on! Using hey, secret hey. military hand gestures. Mm -hmm. Seems like he approves. Okay. Well, I'll lead them to where it's ready to death, where at least where I think he's living. Okay. Um, as there. you guys start going, you hear a familiar sound. Um, oh no! A uh, a very loud, like horn-like sound echoes throughout the entire city. You see, um, or you hear uh, the heavy sounds of armored footfall um, coming in your general direction. Within uh, about 15 seconds, you guys are surrounded by guards guess that are kind of pointing wait. things at you and going, This way, right now. Come on. It's your turn I'll, in the arena. I absolutely follow them and try to get real close so that I can wipe, smudge my arm on some of them. <laughs> so as you get closer on him, he's like, All right, you. You go, Oh, my, you walk that way. <laughs> Wow. Whoa. He is not okay. Oh, whoa. You're not going to survive this. My. Oh, whoa. Maybe I can, can smell it in my eyes. <laughs> oh. All right. I, I, so as he's freaking out, I try to go up to one of his other friends and not like put my arm around him, but definitely like put my finger under my bandage and just try to. Give him a little swipe on the armor so he smells it. <laughs> um, oh roll me a dexterity saving throw. Uh-oh. Why are you being so rude? I'm not being rude. Why are you being rude? Oh. Oh, I rolled a natural one, which is a total of four. Uh, you take five bludgeoning damage as the uh, other end of the kind of spear... Uh, he's holding smacks you in the gut and pushes you away. Oh, I thank you, sir. Then they start kind of jostling you, and you guys get into a very familiar-looking room. As before, 
you're on one side of the room and there is bars and then the other side of the room and there's a door on the other side. Um, it doesn't seem like anyone is entering. Uh, and uh, you guys start to hear very faintly uh, the sound of uh, the audience outside. And uh, as you guys are kind of sitting there, generally you, you, you kind of sit there for anywhere from around like an hour to, you know, two or three hours, depending on what's going on. This time you haven't been in this room for more than about 10 minutes um, before. Is this not making any sound at all? I hear it. Yeah, I hear the uh, background music. Well, now it's not doing it for me. Why are you doing this? Tabletop audio, stop it. Well, you guys can hear it. The audience can't. All right. Aww. So, um, you guys watch as the wall opposite the bars um, lifts up. Now I can hear it. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lifts up and uh, you guys kind of step out and the view that you see is so different you 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 think you've gone to the wrong place as you look out you're expecting to see this large circular arena with you know a, a dirt floor and and you know entrances uh, but as you step out um, you're instantly hit in the face uh, with a massive wave of humidity and kind of musk and as you walk out um, you step and your feet squish into soft mud um, when you look around you can see these uh, trees um, that are thick enough that you can't actually see the audience you can hear them but you can't actually see them uh, and you can see vines hanging from these trees um, and uh, you can see the entire area looks to be this just decrepit swamp um, with uh, uh, various things. Yeah, tabletop audio is not working for me right now, so we're not going to use it. Man, Aww. roll 20. Get your shit together. Um, so as you guys come out, you can smell... Um, uh, the smell of like, you know, rotting plants and things like that. That's very typical of a swamp or marsh region. Um, you guys can hear uh, insects buzzing around and things like that. And um, the whole thing just seems weird. And uh, then you hear the familiar voice of the announcer goes, Ladies and gentlemen. Today, our favorite gladiators, the traitor, the half-breed, the dragon, and the other one, <laughs> will be facing a creature that none of you have seen before. The Council of One has personally provided us with a challenge so amazing that you will hardly be able to believe your eyes. Gladiators, prepare for your end. And then all of a sudden, nothing. You can't hear the audience anymore. You only hear the sounds that you would expect to hear in a swamp. And you start hearing kind of a breeze and you feel a little bit of wind rush past you. Um, I'd like everyone to make uh, perception checks with disadvantage, please. Okay. That natural one. All right, um, Elaine, you are perplexed with the flower at your feet. Twelve. Flower. Thirteen. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Kata? Twelve. All right. 
Um, so as you guys are sitting there, um, Avok, you got, what was it, 15? Yeah, Avok was 15. Okay. Um, Avok, you get the feeling that something is wrong. You're not sure what, but there's something about, because you've been in swamps before, you've, you've fought in them before, and you know how they're supposed to work, but there's just something slightly off. And as you're trying to figure out what it is, there's a flower. That was horrible. There's that was flower. much better. Um, twenty-four. Does a twenty-four hit you, Fade? Yeah. All right. Uh, and that's a nat twenty. So, uh, I'm out. <laughs> oh no. So as you're you're standing there, Fade, you feel this kind of pickup in the breeze, and then it feels like a sledgehammer has just smashed into uh, your front, and uh, you take ten damage from the first blow, ten bludgeoning damage. And as you try to right yourself and figure out exactly what in the world is going on, um, hold please. I had it open to the page and I closed it because I'm a brilliant, brilliant DM. There we go. Um, and then the second attack does 17 bludgeoning Oof. damage. Oof. As, uh, uh, as you try to right yourself, you feel uh, another blow hit you right uh, at the base of your... Um, spine or at the the base of your neck, and you feel a cracking sensation as whatever it is hits you. And uh, I'd like everyone to roll for initiative. <laughs> what is this initiative you speak of? <laughs> Does this mean I get to fight back? Mm, depending on how conscious you are. Probably not. Not for long. Don't worry. All right, what do we got? Avok? 13. All right, Kata? 16. Elaine? 10. And Fade? 10 slow. All right, so uh, first up is uh, you guys have no idea. Um, but the first thing it's going to do is try taking two more swings at Fade. Uh oh. Uh, that's only going to be a 14. Yes. All right, and the second attack is uh, in 18. That's magical. Ten more bludgeoning damages. You, you're sitting there, and you're trying to figure out what's going on, and you feel this rush of wind, and you immediately duck out of the way. And uh, as you try and figure out what it is, you feel um, your face gets smacked by something solid. Um, you taste blood. And have to try and figure out what it is. While this is happening, Avok, something bizarre starts happening to you. Well, that's a crit. Ah! Um, and uh, the second attack is only going to be a 15. Uh, misses. Okay. So you're sitting there, and out of nowhere, you feel on your ribs uh, like a sledgehammer has just smacked you. You take 17 bludgeoning damage. As you right yourself, you feel something coming right at your face, and you bring the long sword up and uh, 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 kind of just move it, and you feel whatever it is get deflected by your long sword. The weird thing about it is you were looking directly at whatever this thing was that was coming at you and saw nothing. Elaine. It's... Uh, how does... 15. Mm, yeah. Okay. Second attack is a crit. Uh, probably dead. <laughs> Uh, well, you had, um, full hit points. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> it's, uh, 20, 27 total bludgeoning damage. As, uh, again, you're sitting there and you feel this rush of wind and the back of your head explodes in pain. 
and as you kind of try and right yourself, you feel almost like a giant right hook just hit you on the jaw and sent you sprawling for a little bit. Again, not really being able to see what's going on. Um, it goes to Kata. You've just seen your three friends get beat up by nothing. What would you like to do? I'm going to uh, use a uh, third level uh, two wounds on uh, Elaine. So, Kata, you rush over, your hands glowing. Um, you uh, touch Elaine on the arm and roll your hit points. Mm. Uh, and uh, Elaine, you are uh, up 21 hit points. You now are only down six. So that's nice. Um, anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, uh, can I... Uh, did the... Uh, did the Surrey Dusk companion look anything like... Uh, what you said it was um, mild after. I'm sorry. Ask that one more time. I didn't get that. I did the serrated, serrated dust companion look guy. Oh no! <laughs> it, it was kind of this 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 bipedal, vaguely humanoid, like hunched over thing. Um, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. he's he's not currently with you guys, and and neither is uh, Fluffy. So. Uh, uh, okay, I, I guess I'll go uh, Saber Tooth Tiger then. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, make a, make a history check for me. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. 16? Yeah, go ahead. Go ah. ahead. I'm going to turn into an Alzor. So you guys watch as Kata, uh, as she comes over and she heals Elaine, she kind of looks around and this look of fear in her eyes gets replaced by this look of rage. And you watch her start growing bigger and bigger and her legs start to swell and you see these big claws uh, appear at the end of them. And then you see her, her uh, mouth jut forward and these rows of razor sharp teeth appear and she grows about 10 foot high into this giant primordial rage beast i'll end my turn there all right uh next up is going to be abak okay um okay first thing i'm pissed i'm raging okay <laughs> Much um, like you were before this session. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this time it's not Rage Against the Machine. Yeah! <laughs> puns. Yeah. Take inspiration for that. I like puns. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Anyways, okay. Um, if I is probably going to have to do disadvantage rolls, but just swing in the direction where he got smacked. Um... Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, make uh, make an attack roll with disadvantage. I figured. Uh, oh, that's worse. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I don't actually know what the AC for these guys are. I should look that up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they have massive ACs. All right. Well, Cool. Go for it. Okay. Uh, the uh, first attack is an 11. All right. So as you swing your axe, uh, uh, you swing through sword. air. You're, um, you, you swing through the center of where you thought it should be. Nothing. Mm. Okay. My second attack, I'm going to... Try doing a just like a three sixty swing, sort of see if I can nail something. 
Um, make an investigation check. Okay. That's my investigation. Okay, straight d20 roll. Come on, crew. Oh. Uh, 14. Um, so kind of moving your axe around a little bit and uh, trying to, uh, to gauge, um, uh, you actually narrow down where the creature isn't, whatever it is. It's not standing where it was when it hit you. Um, and it's not in any of the spaces immediately to the left or right of that. Beyond that, you're still a little bit um, confused. So go ahead and make your attack roll with disadvantage. Mm. Okay, come on. <sighs> you're kidding me. Goddamn disadvantage. I rolled a 5 and a nat 20. That pisses me off. You have uh, inspiration. Hang on. Well, cancel one. Wait, cancel. Oh. Can't. Well, it's too late. I'll have to use the inspiration at some other time. Anyways, uh, 5 plus 8 is 13. Uh, again, you take a swing and nothing is there. Damn it. That's Anything else turn. you want to do with your turn? No, that's it. All right. Uh, that brings us to Elaine. Oh, boy. You said we were like... I mean, it's a swamp kind of environment, so the mm -hmm. ground's muddy. Uh, like the prints. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, there there are certain it. places where there are are, are dry ground, um, but you would expect uh, any creature that's walking on the ground would leave some sort of impression. Can I see if there's any around us? <laughs> Make a survival check. I I'm good at that. I think no. <laughs> think I would. Oh, Rogues are great a... at survival. Yeah, I'm wise with my 10 wisdom. 11. <laughs> um, the weird thing is, you're looking around, because you know, you know where the creature was when it hit you. You know, it, it hit you. Um, you're looking around. The only tracks you see anywhere in this entire swamp area are the tracks that you guys have made. <laughs> Oh, great. Tarzaning us. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Um, so what do you want to do? Well, they're not on the ground. I mean, they could be flying. I don't know. Um, oh, freaking no. <laughs> All of a box attacks with. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. Um, <laughs> the one time I know prepare lesser restoration. Ugh. Um. I don't have anything I can do. I I don't even know what I could do. Shoot. Uh... You gotta find a way to see him. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do? Again, you are you are in a swamp area, so there there are, there are, there are places where there's actually like, from what you can tell, there's like ankle to like knee deep water. There are places where it's just very moist and muddy. There are a few dry patches. Is it flammable? No. <laughs> um, nothing fire. you can see right now you think would be particularly flammable. You think a lot of the vegetation would smoke a lot but not really catch fire. I'll make it flame. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay I'm going to take out my whip. Okay. And I'm just going to try, I don't know. I don't know. Just kind of like whip up some mud in front of us, like in a cone. I don't know, just to see if it hits anything. <laughs> okay. Um. Make a uh, make me a straight up dex check. Stranger danger. I don't. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> What'd you get? One. <laughs> so you sit there and you slam your dragon tail into the muddy ground uh, next to you. Um, and, uh, you splash a little bit of mud on yourself. It doesn't quite go the direction you were hoping. I'm done. <laughs> okay. 
I wish I could rage right now. <laughs> Fade. <sighs> yeah. You are up. So I I just got my face punched in pretty hard, and I don't know what happened. So I'm just gonna like take a step back and put my wound up to my face to muffle my voice and I'm going to whisper something so that hopefully no one else can hear me and I'm going to invoke the name of the dark lady to uh, all right I need you to roll a uh, a stealth check with disadvantage but I muffled my voice yes 19. but you're uh, yeah and... 22. 19 is low. Okay. Um, As you are sitting there and you kind of muffle your voice and you whisper this name that you know have power um you are no longer in the uh the swamp you're in an unlit room you have no idea how far away the walls are there's a single light coming from some source that you can't see directly above you giving you a 10 by uh a 10 foot uh in diameter circle of light that you're currently standing in. Outside the light, you can see the darkness kind of moving and shifting. And you see a humanoid form start to uh, kind of coalesce out of this moving and shifting shadow. What do you do? Um... second uh roll 20 we're really mad at you right now <laughs> uh <laughs> i'm gonna real quick just reload the page and see if that doesn't help a little bit um so yeah i'll be right back guys the audience can still see me because, you know. Good grief. There we go. Right, I've got everybody buffeted. Everyone but we the, the the guy we actually need. Yeah. I'm scared. Oh. <laughs> Wait till you see what happens next. <laughs> So we're going to give him just a couple of seconds here because normally I would just move on to the next, you know, the next step. But this is a very, this is a, a, a very, very significant thing that he is doing. And so it may change everything very quickly here. All right, come on, Fade, come back. We believe in you. Hey, we can see you. You can see him. Oh, there we go. Can you All hear right, me, Fade? So. Hmm? Yes, sir. All right, go where for I, it. Where I, uh, You're cutting out. You know what? I am trying so hard here, Roll20. I really am. But this is just bonkers. The hell? I can just go buy four, five, six pack from Fantasy Grounds. <laughs> I cannot. I I seriously cannot understand why this keeps happening, because it's been so solid. Yeah. I'm going to try an experiment. Sorry, audience. This is kind of boring, but... Okay. 
All right. Fade, can you hear me? I can't hear you, but I can see you, Fade. I can't see him. All right. I can just try typing. I don't know. All right. Here we go. So, to kind of narrate to the audience what is going on here, um, Fade drops to his knees in the middle of this circle of light as the being kind of coalesces and takes uh, the f uh, a feminine form and walks closer to him. He averts his eyes and gazes downward um, and... Uh, starts speaking to the entity, saying, Dark Lady, I, uh, I've invoked your name to ask for your aid. I am so close to finding a new smith of the gods and being able to forge a weapon that will serve you. It cannot end here. So I beseech you to end this quickly so that I may return to the quest you have given me. Uh, Fade, roll me a religion check. Eleven. Okay. So, uh, as you're sitting there, you've had conversations with the, uh, um, with your deity before, but something about this seems very different. Most of your conversations have been, um, she's had almost a welcoming presence. Like she was, uh, uh, you know, she wanted to reach out and speak to you. In this particular one, you feel almost like you're on trial, like you've done something wrong. And um, as uh, as you uh, are sitting there, um, most of the other conversations you've had, um, it's only been the most recent ones where you've actually been able to understand. Um, what she was saying to you. And uh, this is very different. The words that you hear are cold and uh, very pointed. And you feel this sharp pressure on the top of your head as if a uh, clawed hand had just rested there and sunk its claws just barely uh, into the flesh of your skull. Um, not enough to cause any damage, but like a, like a very large bird had just perched there. And you hear the words, My champion, I entrusted you with my name so that you may use it to further my goals not to protect your friends not to kill mindless assassins that are also 
attempting to do my work. You have betrayed my trust, and you will now pay the price. And you are instantly back in the swamp. You guys watch as Fade begins to glow this dark indigo color. You've never seen, like you've seen him cast spells and things like that, and so you're familiar with the glow. You've never seen it like this. It's completely surrounding him. You can see it um, coursing over his body. You see him start to tense his muscles. You see him start to cry out, but no sound comes from it. Um, the energy itself seems to be um, almost attempting to restrain him and strangle him. You can see it wrap around his throat, wrap around his arms, his legs, his chest, um, and start to constrict and squeeze him. Uh, and I would like everyone but Fade to make me uh, constitution saving throws. <laughs> Eight. Fourteen. Okay. Twenty-five. Oh, All right. I, I think that was on the Okay. So I'm going to see if I can wait until Fade comes back. Because he's going to want to know what happened. All right, Fade, can you hear me? Fade, my good buddy. So, uh, he'll have to watch the uh, video on demand. Um, as you guys are watching him kind of contort and cringe, you see the energy that is uh, coalescing and, and, and squeezing him flare out in this giant wave of indigo energy. And as it passes over Kata, you feel as though your very soul is being ripped from your body. You are currently at zero hit points. You're not dead. You are just at zero hit points. As it goes over and it hits Elaine, Elaine... You feel the connection you have with your dragon master instantly sever. And you watch your entire world go dark. And you are at zero hit points. Avok, you get hit with this wave of uh, energy. And as you sit there, um, as it rushes over your skin... You look, and it looks like your skin instantly starts to rot. Um, you feel this incredible amount of pain, but your barbaric strength and just the sheer amount of pain you have been subjected to your entire life pushes through it. Um, whatever half of your hit point total is, um, you are now reduced to half of your hit point total. But you are conscious. Since you're the only one that's currently conscious right now, you look around and you see these three creatures get bathed in uh, this indigo light. You hear them cry out and writhe in pain and agony. Um, they look to be almost beings created out of solid gas and air. You've never seen anything like this before. And then they disintegrate. So now Fade is sit uh, uh, standing there looking around, seeing two of his allies unconscious, bleeding out, seeing you sitting there writhing in pain but conscious, and the enemies that you are fighting don't exist anymore. Oh. Um, since Fade uh, just went, you technically go first. Avok, what would you like to do? Mm. 
fuck. Um, okay. Uh, fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, damn it. What do I have on me? Okay, who would pair? Okay, but, yep, I have this, at least, thank God. Okay, and take out the one greater hero potion that I thankfully have, and, mm. like, just kata, like, like, just get it, like, in her mouth and, like, make her drink, <laughs> get her okay. back to consciousness. Uh, Kata, I need you to make a death saving throw. Okay. 17. All right. As you try to pour the liquid into her mouth, you can see that she's just barely breathing. And you've done this before. You kind of expect what's supposed to happen, and it doesn't. Her breathing normalizes. Um, it gets a little bit deeper, but she doesn't wake up. Uh, Kata, you are currently stabilized. But she is unconscious. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, Fade, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so, yes, the, the long and short of it is, um, you are currently at half your total hit points. Um from uh, the energy kind of crushing you. Uh, And uh, uh, Kata is unconscious but stable. Uh, Elaine is unconscious and slowly dying. And Avok is covered in necrotized, rotting skin, but is still conscious. What do you want to do? Um... Well, I think uh, I'm probably forsaken here, so I'll uh, use the charge of my healer's kit to uh, stabilize Elaine. Okay. Uh, Elaine, uh, I need you to make a death saving throw. Oh, yay. Oh, that's a three. Okay. So you have one failed death save. Fade, you don't know what's wrong. There's no visible wounds on him. He's not bleeding out, but you can feel the life fading from him. Uh, The attempt to stabilize him fails. Uh, Kata is fine. Avok, it goes back to you. Damn it. I don't have any potions. I don't have healing. I fuck. Uh, uh, Perform CPR on LA. I don't know. Medicine check? Sure. Go for it. That's my mess. Plus one. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's uh, good. Great. Awesome. Uh, twenty unnatural. Okay. Okay. Uh, Elaine, make me another death save. Ten. You got a ten. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So Avok, um, you're kind of in the same boat as Fade. You can't tell what's wrong. There are no open wounds. Um, you don't see any internal injuries because, again, being on the battlefield, you've, you've seen people that are perfectly fine on the outside but are, like, bleeding on the inside. That's not happening either. You just – it's almost like his life force is slowly being drained out of him. Um, and so you do the only thing you can think to do. In your mind, life force equals blood. Blood, life force. You know, if if your life force is being drained out, you are losing blood. And so you slit your wrist and pour it into his mouth. That's the only thing you can think to do. Um, you take five slashing damage from doing it. That's five. Um, but Elaine um, starts to breathe a little bit deeper. Color starts to return to him a little bit. Um, Unfortunately, you realize that um, he's now almost kind of nursing on your wrist and is drawing out more blood than you can really afford to lose. Um, I would like contested... um, 
Let's do um, uh, Elaine's uh, contested wisdom checks from the both of you guys, Elaine and Avok. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> okay. Okay. I rolled a 19. Okay. I rolled a 13. Uh, Avok, your arm starts to hurt and you start to lose a little bit of your vision as it starts. You get that little bit of tunnel vision. Um, You take an additional uh, 10 necrotic damage as he is draining the life force out of you. Okay. Uh, no. Oh, so fucking hard. Um, okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, go ahead and make me another contested wisdom. Fuck, don't roll high. Oh, wait a minute. Um. So fade. I guess uh, the question is, are you going to toss it to him? Are you going to try and force feed it to him? Or are you going to try and force feed it to Elaine? Okay. So uh, Fade uh, comes over and kind of pushes, uh, puts his hand on your shoulder and thrusts into your hand this vial of this incredibly dark... Um, maroon liquid uh in uh, uh, uh a a stopped vial um and says it's it's cracking blood <sighs> okay the what do you fucking... do with that Avak? okay tear my arm away from elaine's mouth okay. uh, and fuck <laughs> make another I... uh contested wisdom check between you two That's better. Thirteen. Thirteen. Versus, okay. So, for whatever reason, when you tried to pull it away before, you got this overwhelming sense that that was a really bad idea. That if you pulled it away, you were going to kill him. This time, you kind of get that feeling, but you just fight it off and you, you rip it away. Um, and your vision starts uh, stops going dark and... Uh, You start to feel a little bit better. The lightheadedness that you were feeling starts to go away. Um, But uh, you're really not feeling all that great. Uh, You watch uh, Elaine kind of cough a little bit. um, And while still unconscious, he licks the blood from around his lips and then goes into a very deep coma. Uh, Yes, Fade. Um, there's like mosquitoes and stuff like that. Um, you don't see, um, you don't see anything larger than, than, than a small insect. So let your imagination run. Um, searching around for something that would have enough of a life force for you to do anything with vampiric touch. Nothing there. There's, there's nothing with enough of a life force for that to be effective. Other than you, you do have two unconscious targets right in front of you. Hey, Vok, how you doing? I'm just fucking doing, dude. I want to try. I Can't might you... not even have Can't any you... healing power at all, but I'm going to try a level one cure wounds on Avok to see what happens. Um. Roll me a concentration check. Eleven. Um, as you sit there and you attempt to cast the spell, nothing happens. You're you're familiar with how this works. Normally you feel this surge of energy. It comes from your holy symbol, goes into your hand, goes into where you want. Nothing happens. Okay. I drink a vial of cracking blood. 
Uh, make a con save. Twenty. Uh, you avoid getting poisoned again, but you spit it up pretty quickly. It's uh, it is not something that is very palatable at all. Um, as you guys are sitting there, um, you start We're lying to hear there. well lying there, yeah. You start to hear the sound of the crowd again, um, and you see the trees. Uh, above that have been blocking out the sky kind of fade so that they're translucent now. Like, they're, the tops of the trees are still there, but you can see through them. You can see that you are still in the arena, but the cover of the treetops was some sort of an illusion. Um, and you see the door behind you open like it did before. You don't see any guards right now coming to push you in like they normally do. Um, but that's the only exit that you can see right now. What do you guys want to do? Oh, fuck. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Maybe that sort of guy can help us. Um, I'm uh, fucking ideas, but maybe that's something. Uh, Avok um, picks up Elaine and cuts uh, over his shoulders like he does with everyone who's yeah. unconscious. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and just make me a real quick strength, uh, strength or athletics check. Fair enough. One person you'd be fine. Two people is a little bit of work. <laughs> yeah, twenty unnatural. You're fine. Yeah, you have no problem picking them both up. They're they're relatively small. I mean, he um, managed down that burning tower of spider. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was for the days. <laughs> All right, Fade. Do you see Avok pick up your two unconscious teammates and walk away? What do you do? I'm gonna try to cast cure wounds on myself now to see if she's completely gone or not. Uh, concentration check, please. All right, roll, uh, roll healing. Twelve. You take twelve necrotic damage. Uh. As that happens, I just drop my holy symbol as I die. Uh. So, Avok, um, as you get to the room, you kind of look back and you watch Fade's eyes just kind of roll back in his head and he hits the ground. Oh, come on. <laughs> Fucking leave, leave me. Your hands are full. You can't do shit. Take them back. Get them safe. You can, you can put them down in the room and go get them. Like, he literally is about 30 feet away from the room. You guys didn't move very far. Okay, you guys stay here. I gotta go get the idiots. Ugh. And he's, the... he's a lot heavier than they are. But you're a bad I'm, guy. No, I'm, I'm picking it up like by the foot and just dragging his ass. <laughs> so you drag Fade into the room. Uh, the door shuts. Uh, Fade, go ahead and make me a death save. Uh, okay, he's just unconscious. All right, you're good. Thirteen. Um. Uh, the floor drops out like it has before. You guys kind of tumble into the uh, Gladiator City beneath uh, the arena. Um, Avok, you look around, you know that you're at a normal walking pace. You're about 10 minutes away from the hut that you guys have been calling home. With three unconscious bodies, it's going to get a little bit more confusing. Um, Fade, go ahead and make me another um, death save. 18. All right. You notice that while Elaine and Kata are, they seem stable enough and, and, and are, are, are definitely unconscious, Fade is very slowly going from these very, very shallow breaths to slightly deeper breathing, slightly better looking. Um, 
again, with him, just like the other two, there doesn't really seem to be anything wrong with him. Oh, God, what the fuck did you do? Uh, um, does, uh, I searched through Fade, like, to see if I could find anything that could help me, like, resuscitate him in any way. Like, do Fade. I find his healer's kit? Uh, yeah, you would find his healer kit. Uh, Fade, do you have anything else on you? Like healers no, or anything? Useful. No. Okay. You find his healer's kit. Fuck. Okay. Uh, can I use that to try anything? Uh, sure. You use it. There's there's some smelling salts in it. There's a, there's a few like balms and things like that. You do what you can to try and stabilize him. Um, Fade, you stabilize. <sighs> Whatever is wrong with Fade, it's very very different from what's wrong with Elaine and Kata. <sighs> All right. I don't know what is going on. So, Avok, you are still the only person conscious. What would you like to do? Well, this is fuck. Is there anyone nearby that I can just... Um, looking around, uh, you don't see anyone. Okay, um, then I'm gonna... Oh, man. <laughs> Again, if you were to just carry the bodies, like take all three of them, it would be hard, but you could probably get to your residence within about 25, 30 minutes. Well, that's what's gonna happen, because <laughs> Hayfog doesn't know what else to fucking do. Um, uh, athletics check for me, please. Catch up. Fuck. That's the 20. You're, you're fine. You make it there in 15. You put Elaine uh, on one shoulder, Kata on another, and uh, kind of drag Fade in full armor and uh, make without too much difficulty. Um, the only person that's conscious I just lost their video. Roll 20. I love you. I really do. I think you're a great program. I love the fact that you're free. But seriously, dude, get your shit together. Can't see here. Yep. Give me a second. I'm going to try something. I'll be right back, guys. I can hear both of you. <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Cool. I'm back. So, um... Yeah, you make it back. Uh, the home still smells bad. <sighs> you guys never kind of cleared out the gunk that was in there. If I could it's just gonna let them like lay their their stable so he, okay. so they'll eventually get up. But Avox he's not gonna sleep. He's gonna like stay awake as long as he can until okay. they're cut. Uh over the next hour you see Elaine start to like rouse a little bit. He looks around, he looks really, really pale. Um but he's conscious now. Uh, Elaine, you have one hit point. Oh, baller. Um, an hour after that, Kata slowly starts moving a little bit. She gets up. Um, she looks... Uh, a mess. Yes. Her hair is like all tussled. Her hand or her hand is showing. She just looks incredibly rough. Like she's just been had a near-death experience. Um, <laughs> and then... Two hours later, Fade slowly starts to come to consciousness. Um, at this point, it's been, it's been four hours, basically, since you brought them all back. Um, uh, Avok, you still feel really rough. Um, this has been an incredibly taxing thing and you still have no idea what happened. You have never seen 
Like, the creatures didn't just die. They ceased to exist. They were just gone. And then whatever happened to your friends, you've never seen that happen before. Um, Fade, you are uh, confused, to say the least. So you guys are all conscious now. What would you like to do? What, what happened? You, you don't get an answer happened. from anyone. <laughs> oh, boy. They locked my computer again. Yeah, I'm at four percent. So, like, in order to have the same charge, I have to be muted. So. No, that's fine. the 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 buzzing is not that bad. So, go ahead and plug it in, and uh, I'll just. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that helps. Uh, okay. Fade. What the fuck happened? Don't give me that shit, you better say something. I'm all fucked up. I got no power. We're not getting any more, uh, more help from up top or down below. Um, Fade, go ahead and make a, uh, religion check. Plus five, eleven. So... Before you became a cleric of the Dark Lady, you had a very different focus. You were brought up um, in the uh, Aladrin cleric mindset, which was to be very selfless. You were a servant of the people. Divine magic was dangerous. And the paladins were there to both protect you and protect the world from you because uh, if divine magic is used the wrong way you can kill someone you can do very very bad things one of the things that you were taught as a fledgling cleric as you were you were learning your craft uh, was the idea that you get this power through your deity and um, if you don't follow the tenets of your deity, you can be punished. Depending on the deity, sometimes that's a, uh, a removal of power. Sometimes it's physical punishment. Sometimes it's f being forced to um, go in some sort of quest. Uh, and sometimes it's death. Um, but in general, whatever the punishment is, it's always meant to teach you something. Or at least that's what you were taught. So, as of right now, that's really all you know. That's all I know? I'm certainly not going to own up like it was my fault. There's no chance of that. Okay. So what about the rest of you guys? Like, uh, you said before I lost consciousness, I felt the, the connection to my dragon lord, like, sever. Can uh, I check and see kind if of. I can steal him in light my dagger? With flame, just to see if that's the one. Um, as you sit there and concentrate on it, burst into flame. Okay. Okay. You think that that severing of the connection might have been kind of the severing of your life force. Like you, you get the idea that you were about this close to being real dead. <laughs> okay. So. 
and part of that was you know severing all connections that your soul had to the world and you specifically because of your connection to your dragon master um you have extra things holding you to this world that other people don't um, we think dragons as you um sit there um you start feeling strange like you're not no one's feeling great right now you guys have just had a really bad bad situation um, just gonna mute you real quick while i finish with elaine uh avok just because the, the buzzing is a little bit but i'll get back to you in just a second um elaine you're um Something seems different. You can't tell what it is, but, but something seems different. Your mouth is incredibly dry. Like it's the worst cotton mouth you have ever had. And you're really thirsty. Like more thirsty than you've ever been in your entire life. And your entire body almost seems to buzz and feels weak. You've never felt like this before. Would I, would I have I have a water scan? Would I have water in it? Um, sure. You guys have found water down here. Okay. You know, he's going to try and drink from it, see if it makes him feel any better. Uh, you drink. It's cold. It's wet. Your mouth is still dry. You're still really thirsty. And kind of hungry. But it's a different kind of hunger than you're used to feeling. Fade. <laughs> I really like. Is there anything else that could have totally happened out there? Um. I'm gonna just try to bluff it that no, there wasn't. Okay. Go ahead and roll a deception check. Elaine, make an insight check. Can I insert him too? Me too! <laughs> yeah, I, I think all it. of you guys would be very suspicious at this point. Don't worry about it, I roll a natural 20. Okay. 14! Alright. You know what's funny is I have disadvantage because I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're definitely. <laughs> 13. Yeah. None of you guys believe him. He's hiding something. You have no idea what it is, but he's hiding something. Liar. Elaine, as you are kind of talking to him, this thirst is getting bad. It's getting to the point where it's almost painful how thirsty you are. Like, like almost to the point of wanting to jump on somebody right now. No, you really, you really don't understand it. You're just, you're really, really thirsty, and for whatever reason, the water is not. Um, satiating the thirst. Beyond that, you've got no idea. It's just um, water didn't help, and you're really thirsty. Oh no! So I'm going to uh, look for like some sticks on the ground and quick try to fashion a uh, holy symbol of of the dark lady. Oh, your holy symbol. Um, uh, as much as you would have technically dropped it as you were going, for whatever reason, um, it got caught on your uh, the bandage wrapping. I'm going to try to turn undead. Wow. <laughs> um. I'm not going to destroy undead. I'm trying to turn undead. Make a straight up spell attack roll. Twenty two. Um Elaine. Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Um, you feel this momentary, um, almost like a panic attack rush over you, 
you start breathing faster, you start feeling adrenaline pumping through your veins, and then you kind of shake your head and it's gone. Did I notice this? Uh, make I was, me. An, I was specifically looking at all of you, them. You would have been. Um, make me a. Um, uh, make me an investigation check. Straight, no disadvantage. Nineteen. Um, you noticed a momentary panic in Elaine. I think we need to talk. Yeah, I think we do. We all do. Um, I guess, yeah, sure. I'll cop up a little bit. I'm not going to say exactly what happened, but okay. to say that the Dark Lady, the goddess who gives me my power, mm-hmm. has decided to test us further. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I have the strong suspicion that, uh, Elaine, you are going to be hungry for something else soon. Mm. Something what? What's something um, else? I Is fought, he telling... I fought that one of my last two vials of blood and shake it up a little bit. Okay. Oh, no. Does anything happen to Elaine if I unco- uncork it? Uh, Elaine, uh, do you kind of, like, you just uncork it? In front of you, or do you like shove it under his nose? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna like smell and salt it. Okay. Uh, Elaine, make a Constitution saving throw. Oh my God. Oh, that's an eight. That is the most revolting smell. It's. Uh, okay. I I don't. You probably have never smelled this before, and I'm not gonna tell you why I've smelled it before. Um, but rotting blood is very unpleasant. It is an extremely unpleasant scent, um, just in general. And this is is rotting monster blood. So it is very unappetizing to you. Uh, you watch him like, like shake back really far. You see him throw up a little bit. Um, uh, uh, but other than that, nothing. Uh, if I was going to try something, depending on how close we live, I'll just see if he's wise enough to think about it. Nope, forget it. He ain't doing anything. Okay. Hey, Box, just sitting there. You kind of cover your wrist a little bit because you remember the last time Elaine got a hold of your wrist. Actually, no, that just sparked another roll. Okay. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yep, it is. Okay, I'm about to do something I'm not gonna like, but something really weird happened when I was trying to resist it to you, so I'm gonna take out the dagger that Elaine lent him and just prick his finger. Okay. And just bring it close to Elaine. But um, at the moment Elaine tries to latch onto it, I'm back in one. <laughs> Elaine, make me a straight up wisdom saving throw. Eleven. Um, Avok, make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, I have advantage on that. Thank good. Yeah, thank God indeed. Okay, twenty-one. Um, you see Elaine kind of go passive, kind of like he's almost under hypnosis or something, like he's being charmed. Um as you you sit there and kind of wave it in front of his face and then faster than you've ever seen Elaine move um, he jumps and grabs at your hand and there's this split second that you feel his hands wrapping around yours and your reflexes kick in and they whip the arm back hard enough that it actually throws you back five feet and you land on your ass Okay. Um, Elaine, as soon as he kind of whips himself back, you're, you're back for a little bit. Like you can't really remember what happened over the past couple of seconds, but now Avok is on his ass and everyone's looking at you really weird. 
Fade, what the hell is wrong with him? Well, the whole blood thing is the first tip off, but I'm pretty sure um, Elaine specifically has been uh, given a, a bonus test on how to uh, survive the need to eat blood. Uh, blood. Do any of us believe him? Actually, you know what? I'm not going to roll anything. I'm just going to like grab the fade by his neck and just like, shove him against the wall. Like, stop with the bullshit and just give us a fucking answer. So, Fade, you get pressed up against the wall. Um, As he lifts you, you realize how weak you are. Like, up until this point, you hadn't... It it hadn't quite clicked. Um, But you feel like you've been, you know, hit by a planet. Everything hurts. What? Does my head hit the wall at all when he throws Uh, me up there? Surprisingly enough, Avok uh, is very good at throwing people up against a wall and not hurting them when he wants answers. So he actually thrusts your chest and back into the wall, which forces your head forward and protects it from, from any damage. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Hey, Bach, you you generally see a look of confusion in Fade's eyes, like he he looks perplexed. Because really, I don't know what's happening. You don't like started. this is this is so far beyond the scope of anything you have ever even heard about. Nothing like this has ever happened to you, to anyone you know, in any of the stories you were told uh, that they used as teaching tools. This is. I mean, it'd be like taking an apple, holding it at harm, arm's length, and then letting go of it, and watching the apple spin, carve itself into a replica of the Washington Monument, and then fly into your eye. Like, it is that far beyond what you were expecting. While all of this is happening... Uh, Kata, I would like you to roll, I think it's a d10. Give me a second. I have got so many books here, it is scary. And the one I need is always the one that's on the bottom. Alright. Sorry, guys, I wasn't actually expecting this to happen, so. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, roll me percentile dice. Do you know how to do that? Yes. Okay, go ahead and roll me uh, uh, percentile dice. Uh, I think I got a 71. All right. You, um, uh, this statement is now one of your flaws. I am convinced that powerful enemies are hunting me, and their agents are everywhere I go. I am sure they're watching me at all times. Just being fucking paranoid as hell. (laughs) Jesus. So you are now um, extremely paranoid. You are convinced beyond the ability to be uh, deterred from this idea that there is an an overall evil being that is hunting you, that is sending spies to get you, and is always watching you. And with that, uh, because it's really late, we are going to uh, end it. Uh, thank you so much, guys, uh, for tuning in to this very, very bizarre episode that I did not think was going to go this way at all. 
<laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, tune in not next week, but the week after, and we can see how all of this uh, turns into more really interesting stuff. Because I don't, I don't, I think the players probably hate me at this point, but I think this is really interesting. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>